Good morning, Deacon John here. It's time for the Boo Arbor Kids Schools video of the day. Today is October 16th, this time, and today's daily holidays are National Invento, National Learn a New Word Day, it's Dictionary Day, and it's also the International Day for Cats. There's the spaders. Today's program will have a little bit of a different change. Uh, we'll be discontinuing for a little while the, this day in history uh, to play the moments of history from St. Clair County. And we'll have a new segment of Unleash the Gospel, which will be a account of the pastoral letter from the Archbishop about the new changes of our church. So we hope everybody enjoys that. And now on for Moments in History. Right. Host of St. Clair County Reese's Moment in History. In 1945, the Port Huron District Foundation selected their first project of construction, the Memorial Recreational Park Sporting Complex, that was built to honor the returning veterans and those who did not make it home. This half million dollar facility was built in multiple stages, consisting of a baseball field, clubhouse, three softball fields, a quarter mile track, and a wading pool. The crowning jewel of the complex was a lighted 5,000 seat football stadium. On Armistice Day, 1945, hometown hero Admiral Frederick C. Sherman turned the sod on the field to dedicate the beginning of this project. From the beginning to the end of this project took three years to complete, and on September 17, 1948, East Detroit upset the defending state champion Port Huron High 19-6 in the first football game ever to be played in Memorial Stadium. For Moment in History Extra, I'm Chris Troy, reminding you all that history lives in all of us. Now it's time for Unleash the Gospel! Unleash the Gospel is a pastoral letter that has been written by Archbishop Alan H. Vigneron, who is the Archbishop of Detroit. A reflections of Synod 16. So what does Synod mean? Well, it's a word that means sin together and nod road. So the Archbishop called many people from all over the Archdiocese together to meet to talk about the new road of direction for the Archdiocese of Detroit. Tomorrow we'll begin to delve into some of those things that the Archbishop in his letter deemed important for us to begin on. Until that, we'll wait for our next segment of Unleash the Gospel. This is Franciscan Media's Saint of the Day for October 16th. Today we celebrate St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. After considering and rejecting marriage, Margaret Mary entered the Order of Visitation Nuns at 24. Two days after Christmas in 1674, she received the first of several revelations in which Christ emphasized his love for humanity. In apparitions over the next 13 months, Jesus stressed that his human heart was to be the symbol of his divine human love. By her own love, Sister Margaret Mary was to make up for the coldness and ingratitude of the world. This would be accomplished by frequent reception of Holy Communion, especially on the first Friday of each month, and by an hour's vigil of prayer every Thursday night in memory of Jesus' agony in Gethsemane. The Lord also instructed her to institute a feast of reparation to his heart. Theologians who were called in declared that Margaret Mary's visions were delusions, but a new confessor, Jesuit Father Claude de la Colombière, recognized her genuineness and supported her. Margaret Mary Alacoque died in 1690 and was canonized in 1920. Begun privately in 1686, the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus was extended to the Universal Church 75 years later. There's more about... Our verse today is from the Gospel of Matthew. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will rise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Bible trivia. Yesterday's question was, what is the name of the garden where Jesus often went to pray? And the answer is Gethsemane. And today's question, how many books are there in the Old Testament? And finally, the joke of the day, what do you give a sick lemon? Lemonade. Everybody have a great day.